Okay, uh, so uh, we're pleased to have Maria Napradu from Bucharest, uh, who's gonna talk about uh, Green's conjecture and Cosmo modules. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for the invitation. I think it's a very nice idea to have uh, uh, this conference in uh, these difficult times. Uh, so I'm going to report today on a joint work with uh, Gabi Farkas, um, our late colleague, uh, Stefan Papadima, uh, with Claudio Raikui and uh, Jerzy Weiman. Um, and here's um, the outline of uh, my talk. So I would start with Kazul modules and resonance then CZGs, Green's Conjecture, CZGs of Tangent Developable Surfaces and uh, jump to conclusions. Uh, so let me start with Kozul modules and resonance. So these are uh, very, very simple objects actually that originated in uh, topology and uh, geometry group theory. So for uh, uh, the definition, you need very little actually. You just need a, a vector space so for simplicity, I will just place myself over complex numbers, but basically everything works uh, over any, any field or algebraically closed field. Um, and you need a subspace in uh, the second uh, exterior power. So this is, uh, that's just the setup. It's very, very simple. And then uh, we take the symmetric algebra of this um, <coughs> vector space. And uh, we take the uh, orthogonal k perp, um, the subspace in the dual of the wedge two as being uh, this space, uh, the dual of the quotient. And uh, we can associate uh, two uh, objects to, to this data. So one is um, an algebraic object, which is a, a graded S module. And uh, the other one is an, uh, an affine variety, which is a cone of uh, a projective variety. Uh, so the definition of the, the first object, the algebraic uh, object, the causal module, is um, the homology in the middle of, of uh, this complex here, uh, where uh, this is just the, the first part of the uh, causal uh, complex, usual causal complex. So delta one is just the multiplication map and delta two is the second causal map. And uh, we restrict it to um, K tensor over uh, C with, uh, with S. So normally if you take delta two, the whole delta two here, then you get a, an exact complex. Otherwise, if K is a proper subspace, then you get uh, just a complex with uh, some uh, non-trivial homology. And, um, um, this is actually the only, uh, the, the, the full uh, case is uh, the only case where uh, this uh, complex is, uh, is exact. Um, and uh, this is, uh, this comes with the grading. Uh, more precisely, you take uh, WQ, so the cute um, graded piece of uh, this S module, to be the homology of, of uh, this map where the maps are uh, exactly those uh, described uh, before. So this is the multiplication map and this is the, the uh, uh, second causal map. And uh, that's a covariant functor. That's, uh, uh, that explains why uh, we prefer to say homology and not cohomology uh, for this uh, complex. Uh, and if we fix um, the vector, the starting vector space, uh, the bigger uh, K is, and the smaller uh, the associated uh, Kozul module is. And some of the extreme cases are, of course, uh, when K is the whole thing and then you get zero, uh, or K is zero and then you get uh, uh, the kernel of the multiplication map. Um, so that was uh, for the algebraic uh, part. Now for the geometric part, the resonance variety is uh, just um, this thing. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a cone by definition. We can see it here. It's just the uh, um, set of vectors in the dual of V such that there exists a B with A which B uh, is uh, in K perp and um, A and B are not collinear. And uh, since we removed uh, 
the origin, we have to put it back to, in order to get a, a variety. And uh, hence we get a, a cone in a v, uh, v dual. Um, the uh, relation between them uh, was given by uh, Papadima and Suchu uh, in the same paper where, where they introduced Kozul modules. And um, the resonance variety is the support of the uh, Kozul uh, module. And um, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, resonance is the uh, um, affine cone over um, uh, projective uh, variety. And uh, the projectivization is uh, just um, is obtained as follows. You take uh, K-perp. Uh, this is in this uh, is in uh, wedge two video. In wedge two of video, we also have the Grassmannian. We can uh, consider the intersection between the Grassmannian and this uh, the projectivization of Kper. We pull it back on um, on um, uh, on sigma on the uh, incidence variety, and then you uh, project it to uh, to uh, P of V dual, and uh, you uh, obtain the uh, desired uh, projective variety. So basically this variety is given by an incidence relation. And uh, we have many examples. So that's uh, the first, I will start with the first example, which was the uh, original example in geometric group theory. Uh, if G is any uh, finally generated group, you take the homology uh, of this group with complex coefficients. Um, uh, then you um, take k perp to be the kernel of uh, the wedge, um, and uh, then k is uh, the kernel of, of uh, this map. Uh, then we have uh, with this um, this uh, setup, we have a Kozul module and uh, a resonance, and uh, they play a role in uh, geometric group, uh, group theory. Uh, now, in uh, our favorite uh, subject, algebraic geometry, if um, X is a projective variety, let's take it smooth, and E is um, a rank two vector bundle, not necessarily rank two, so actually it works, uh, the, the definition can be given for uh, in any rank, but let's stick to uh, the rank two case. Uh, K-perp is defined as uh, the uh, kernel of uh, the determinant map. Uh, and then with uh, this setup, we have a Kozul module and uh, a resonance, right? And the resonance is zero if and only if E uh, doesn't have uh, sub, uh, sub pencils. So um, we will see in a moment that this is a recurring uh, condition that the resonance is zero and will play a role in um, our results. Uh, then another example coming from uh, the Gauss wall map. Um, if uh, C is a curve and uh, L is a line bundle, uh, then you have this uh, Gauss wall map or Gauss map, which associates to uh, uh, two vector f which g f dg minus g d f and again to the setup we have a, a resonance uh, and um, um, causal module as it turns out the resonance will be zero here and uh, in a representation theory if you take um, a two-dimensional vector space you uh, consider uh, the n, just a positive number, you take the n minus uh, one uh, symmetric power of uh, u dual, then uh, you can decompose wedge two of sim n minus one by the klebsch gordon rule, and you take uh, k to be the first summoned, in, uh, the wedge two, and uh, again, you have a Kozul module and uh, a resonance. Kozul, the Kozul module is actually called the Feynman module in this case. And it was the first example. It was uh, developed by uh, Weimann uh, way before uh, Papadima and Suchu um, with the attempt to um, study CZGs. And in this case, the resonance is zero again. And um, 
as I uh, as I said, uh, uh, the cases where uh, the resonance is uh, zero are um, relevant cases uh, in the uh, in in practice, and uh, this can be expressed. This condition of uh, vanishing resonance can be expressed in a very simple way, uh, just by using the projective geometry interpretation. The resonance is zero if and only if the Grassmannian the projectivization of K perp do not intersect in uh, in um, P of uh, wedge two V dual. So we will uh, freely uh, replace with, uh, this condition of uh, vanishing resonance with this geometric condition that P of K perp and the Grassmannian uh, have uh, empty intersection. And uh, by dimension computations, uh, um, this um, empty intersection also implies that the dimension of uh, k must be at least 2n minus 3, where the uh, n, uh, n was uh, the um, dimension of the uh, starting uh, vector space. And uh, Papadima and Suchu proved an asymptotic result that um, the resonance is zero if and only if asymptotically uh, the um, Kozul module is zero or the uh, graded pieces of uh, the Kozul uh, module are uh, zero. And they also asked uh, a question in the same paper whether or not we can give an effective vanishing uh, bound. Or was this just a uh, um, uh, I don't know, a, a kind of a geometric uh, phenomenon that can be, cannot be um, controlled. Uh, but uh, in, in our uh, paper, we proved that uh, the answer is, uh, is yes. And we found this um, effective uh, vanishing, which is actually optimal. Um, so the resonance is zero if and only if the graded pieces of the uh, corresponding causal module uh, start to uh, vanish uh, from uh, n minus three on when where n was the dimension of the uh, uh, starting vector space. And uh, a few words about the the proof. So uh, the proof uh, relies on um, several um, preliminary observations. If you take the Grassmannian of uh, uh, two planes in uh, V dual, which uh, play the role in the expression of the this that condition that the the resonance was zero, and uh, Q is the universal rank to bundle on G. Then um, K uh, K was uh, a subspace in wedge two of V, but uh, wedge two of V we want to see it as the uh, space of uh, sections in uh, hyperplane sections in G via the uh, Luker embedding. <coughs> uh, then the resonance is zero if and only if K generates uh, OG of one. And um, um, the graded pieces of the causal module, the corresponding causal module can be interpreted as a co-kernel of, uh, of, uh, of uh, this, uh, this map, which is just obtained by uh, twisting uh, the evaluation map uh, above by sim q of uh, q and uh, taking global sections. And then uh, we take the exact causal complex and uh, twist it with sim q. Um, we know that hypercomology is zero and we apply um, Bot's uh, vanishing uh, theorem uh, to analyze uh, uh, carefully uh, what happens here and uh, um, draw the uh, desired conclusion. So that was very briefly the, uh, the proof idea. And as a corollary uh, for the Weimann modules that were, were defined uh, um, in a representation theoretic setting, um, we have this, um, this vanishing that uh, Wn minus one Q is zero from Q n minus three on. And um, this, this, uh, this result will um, be very useful in uh, the study of uh, equations of uh, canonical curves and uh, their uh, CCGs. 
which is um, the next um, thing I want to, to talk about. So if we fix uh, a smooth um, canonical curve over complex numbers, um, then the curve can either be given by equations or by uh, geometric uh, properties like, uh, you know, brin neuter type uh, conditions or any type of conditions that can uh, help uh, tell the difference between two, two, two curves, two given curves. And uh, a natural question is, uh, what are the, the relations between equations and the, the, the geometry? And to um, um, ensure that there is any uh, relation at all, let's consider the, the, the example of trigonal curves. Um, so if uh, G has a G13, uh, or uh, if you want a, a triple cover of uh, the projective line, then the homogeneous ideal of the canonical curve cannot be generated by quadrics. And why, uh, why is that? Because uh, by uh, geometric riemann roch uh, um, the existence of a G13 translates into the existence of a tricycant line. Actually, we have a whole family of uh, tricycant, uh, tricycant lines. Um, and um, any quadric that uh, vanishes along the curve will vanish uh, also in the three uh, intersecting points. And uh, now, uh, if we have a, um, a polynomial on the, on the line that uh, has three roots, it must be a, a, a degree two polynomial on the line that has three roots, then it has to be zero. So the conclusion is that any uh, quadric that passes through the curve will pass through the line as well. So quadrics do not suffice to um, generate the, uh, the ideal of the curve. And, um, so in conclusion, if the ideal is generated by quadrics, then uh, the curve carries now G13. And the curve, converse is also true in genus um, at least uh, seven. And that's the Enriquez, Babbage, uh, Petri, Petri theorem. It's a, it's a very hard, uh, uh, very deep uh, result in algebraic geometry. And now if uh, we want to move on, <coughs> the number of quadrics in the canonical ideal is always uh, G minus two choose two. And if we want to know whether or not uh, C has a G14, just uh, uh, looking at the uh, ideal and uh, uh, deciding whether or not the ideal is generated by quadrics uh, does not suffice anymore. So uh, the existence of a G14 will uh, be revealed by a finer analysis of, of these quadrics and more precisely the analysis of the uh, of the relations and the nature of the relations of uh, of these uh, these quadrics and these relations uh, form a graded module which is called the first uh, ccg module of the canonical idea and uh, uh, I haven't defined it yet, but um, uh, I can state the, the result. So if the first CCG module is generated by linear forms, then there is no G14 and uh, uh, Schreier and Vazan proved uh, independently in the 90s uh, the, the converse as well. And uh, now if we want to take care of G15 and so on, if we want to, to continue the discussion, we need to look further in the um, um, CZGs. And uh, hence we, uh, at this point, we have to, to define the CZGs. So uh, a CZG is, um, is a mathematical term that is due to Sylvester. He uh, used it for the first time in a paper um, in 1850 in uh, the Dublin Mathematical Journal. And he says, I think this is the first use of uh, the word CCG in mathematics. Uh, I call CCGetic functions um, and CCGetic multipliers uh, um, polynomials that are related in, uh, uh, that come in a relation of uh, this nature. And if we look closer, actually we note that um, U, V, and W are just the equations of, uh, of a twisted cubic. 
So um, the first example in the history of mathematics, mathematics of non-trivial syzygies uh, are um, related to uh, the uh, equations of the twisted cubic. So uh, what are precisely syzygies? If we are given homogeneous polynomials uh, over complex numbers again, a CCG is just a relation uh, among these uh, polynomials with um, homogeneous coefficients. And uh, for example, uh, that's a very stupid example, but sometimes it's the, the, the only example uh, we have. Uh, if P1 and P2 are two uh, polynomials, this, this, this is a CCG and it's called a trivial CCG. So trivial CCGs are uh, this uh, type of uh, very simple CCGs. Then the development of the theory is related to the uh, uh, name of uh, David Hilbert, who published uh, this famous uh, uh, paper in Mathematische Annalen in 1890. And uh, in modern language, uh, what he proved there was uh, the famous uh, CCG theorem. Um, if uh, we take a complex um, vector space uh, with a basis, uh, we consider the irrelevant ideal and the residue field. And uh, we are given a finally generated graded uh, module over the symmetric algebra of, uh, of this uh, complex vector space. Um, the uh, Hilbert CCG theorem states that uh, M has a free resolution of graded uh, modules over this uh, polynomial ring. And um, uh, with the property that uh, the image of uh, all these differentials are contained in M times uh, the, next, uh, the next module. And what's remarkable about it, so uh, Hilbert also states something about the length, so it stops after r plus one steps. And the, um, what's also remarkable is that uh, this is unique up to automorphism of, uh, of the, the, the factors. Uh, so the minimality um, can be expressed in several ways. For example, so if we, um, look back here, so we see that these are three modules. So these uh, um, differentials can be expressed by matrices. And the minimality uh, says that uh, whenever you have, uh, so this, uh, since we are also in the graded uh, setup, uh, those matrices um, are formed with homogeneous polynomials. And the minimality um, means that whenever you have uh, uh, a constant polynomial uh, as an element of one of these matrices, that constant polynomial must be zero. Or in other words, if you, you reduce everything mod M, then the, if the uh, differentials uh, must uh, vanish. So they become, uh, they become zero. Okay, and the elements of uh, the FIs are called the, the CCGs of, uh, of the uh, given module. And uh, those numbers that appear here, so uh, remember that that, that was the um, um, minimal resolution of, uh, of M. Uh, so those numbers that appear as exponents are called the graded Betty numbers of, uh, of the module. And in order to keep track of, uh, in a better way of uh, these graded Betty numbers, we usually uh, organize them in a, in a table, uh, which is the Betty table. And if, if we uh, uh, analyze what, what this Betty table actually means, you see that on the first, so for i equals zeros, that that would be the, uh, the first column of the Betty table, we uh, read the degrees of a minimal uh, of a minimal generating set of uh, of the module, and then in the next um, column we read the degrees of a minimal generating set of relations. 
among these uh, generators of the module and so on. And uh, one example, so that, that was the original uh, example that um, ignited the uh, CCG theory for twisted cubic. So the equations of uh, the twisted cubic are given by the two by two matrix of, uh, of uh, uh, two, two by two, sorry, two by two minus of, of this matrix. And we have two uh, linear relations among these uh, minors, which are obtained just by copying either one row or the, uh, the first row or the second row and uh, uh, noting that the determinant is zero. And the Betty table of the coordinate ring is the following. So we have one, when I uh, write a dash here, it means uh, zero. So this means that uh, the coordinate ring is uh, generated by uh, one element, which is of course trivial. And here on, on this row, we read the um, uh, degrees of the generators of the ideal, which are three quadrics, which are exactly the three two by two minors. And here we have uh, two linear relations among these, uh, these quadrics. So on, on, a, on, a linear, on, a, on a horizontal strand, we'll, we read uh, generally uh, linear relations. And now uh, for the case of uh, canonical curves, the shape of uh, the Betty table in this case is simpler because uh, it is symmetric. So um, if G is, uh, is the genus, it starts from zero, it goes all the way to G minus two, and it's symmetric with respect to, to the center. So here you imagine that you have a center and all these numbers uh, that are symmetric uh, with respect to the center uh, coincide. And uh, if you just want to, you are um, interested in the distribution of zeros in this Betty table, the uh, most uh, powerful uh, statement that we have uh, to date is uh, Green's conjecture, saying that um, on this strand, the, uh, the, uh, this is uh, labeled number two, um, these are uh, zero all the way to the Clifford index of the curve. So the Clifford index is the, just this, this invariant, which is uh, bigger than or equal to one by uh, Clifford's theorem, since the curve is uh, non hyper elliptic And some examples, uh, so the Clifford is precisely one if and only if C is either trigonal or plain quintic. And Green's conjecture predicts that the ideal is generated by quadrics unless it uh, is one of uh, those uh, cases. And this is the statement of Enriquez Babbage Petrie Fura. Now, uh, Clifford is two if and only if it's either, uh, it is either tetragonal or plain sextic. And in this case, Green's conjecture predicts that the module of relations among the quadrics, so we know that the um, ideal is generated by quadrics. So the module of relations among the, the quadrics is generated by linear relations unless C is uh, either tetragonal or plain sextic. And this is the um, a statement of uh, the theorem of uh, Schreier and Vazan. And uh, the uh, most important uh, result in this theory is due to Vazan. Uh, it was proved in two um, separate papers according to the parity of, of the genus. So first came the uh, even genus case and then uh, she managed to prove, prove uh, the uh, odd genus case. So if uh, C is a general canonical curve of genus at least five, then uh, B i j of C equals zero for all i uh, lower than the integer part of g minus two over two and uh, j at least two. So in terms of the Betty, mm, of, uh, the Betty table, uh, the shape is the following. So I um, wrote, uh, I also marked the, uh, somehow the middle of the table to understand uh, more clearly what happens here. So, um, uh, Vazan's theorem states that uh, in the generic case, 
the number of uh, zeros in this strand is maximal possible. So we can no, not go with zeros over this, uh, over this line because uh, that's, um, this is a general algebraic fact. If you take alternating sums on these diagonals, the alternating sums uh, always are related to the, um, that can be recovered uh, from the Hilbert function. And the Hilbert function is uh, always the same for, uh, for a canonical curve. So uh, if we had uh, more zeros here, then that would mean that the, um, that would contradict the formula that relates uh, uh, the Hilbert function with the alternating sums uh, on those, uh, those diagonals. Okay, so in the, uh, um, in this case, um, we we we, um, we we have. Um, Excuse me. Yes. Can I ask you this dash? Uh, do they mean zeros? Yeah, yeah, they they mean zeros. All the dashes are are zeros. Yes, that's what I. Uh, so I think you excluded the case when some uh, coefficients are non-zero, right? Not when they are zero. Uh, sorry, say that again. So what? I mean, you say. No, okay, maybe it was just, that doesn't matter. I think it just misspelled. No, I, I was saying that AI minus one cannot be, cannot be zero. Ah, this one, oh, okay. Or, or AI cannot be zero. That, that was, uh, because so the these numbers. Because the these numbers on the diagonal are trivial, that's what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But these guys can never be, be zero. So that's why uh, we, we cannot ask whether this, this is zero or not because this, we know for sure that this, this, these things are not zero. So in this sense, the, uh, this uh, vanishing uh, provided by Voisin is, uh, is maximal possible, what we can, we can ask. Okay. Uh, now some, some examples in the uh, genus five. So a generic curve of genus five is a complete intersection of three quadrics. And the Betty table looks like, so we, here we have the three quadrics. So these are the, uh, on this uh, column, we read the degrees of the generators. So we have three quadrics. And these three quadrics are only related by three uh, trivial relations. So these are uh, the three trivial, trivial relations among uh, this, these quadrics. So we don't have any, any uh, linear relations, a relation uh, among those, uh, those quadrics. On the contrary, if the curve uh, is trigonal, then uh, these uh, quadrics do have linear relations. They, they have actually two linear relations. And as we saw before, uh, trigonal curves cannot have uh, homogeneous ideals only generated by quadrics. So we also need cubics. And in this case, we need uh, precisely two, two cubics. So the ideal is generated by uh, three quadrics, two cubics, and uh, we have uh, relations. So we have two uh, relations that are linear among these quadrics and three relations that are quadratic uh, with respect to the quadrics and linear with respect to the, to the cubics. So that's somehow the, the situation in the genus five curve. Now in genus uh, six, a generic curve is a, a quadric section of the del pezzo surface of degree five in P5. So we have six uh, quadrics. So five of them actually generate the del pezzo surface and they have five linear relations among them. And this quadric, the sixth quadric section uh, uh, is not related by quadric uh, relations. Uh, but only by linear, uh, sorry, by uh, linear relations, but only by um, uh, trivial relations with the other five uh, quadrics. And these are the five uh, trivial relations here. And uh, then we uh, complete the, uh, the table. And uh, if we uh, are in the case of uh, trigonal curves or um, plain uh, quintics, for example, um, then uh, the uh, quadrics do not suffice anymore and we also need uh, the cubics and the shape of the Betty table uh, changes a little bit. But uh, please know that, for example, here we have five, 
and here we have eight three. Eight, min eight minus three is five. That's what I, I, I said before that the alternating sum um, does nothing, uh, has nothing to do with the, with the curve itself, but only with the Hilbert function, which is uh, controlled by the, uh, by the genus. And uh, here the same. Um, okay, and um, Vazan's proof is um, rather involved, so it's quite intricate. But um, there, there, there is a, a, ma a massive simplification of, uh, of her proof by uh, Kemeny. It will be uh, published in, uh, in Inventiones. Um, we uh, found, uh, in our paper, we found a different proof to Vazan's uh, theorem, but using uh, Kozul modules instead of uh, Hilbert schemes, as she uh, did before. And the one advantage is that, uh, whereas her uh, proof only works over complex numbers because she has a trace um, argument that involves dividing by some, uh, some numbers at some point, and we have to, to, to be careful not to divide by uh, the characteristic of, of the, uh, the field, uh, our uh, result also works in a positive characteristic. Um, so, um, the relation with the um, uh, Kozul uh, modules um, is obtained um, via uh, the tangent developable surface, which is uh, for any G, uh, you take the rational normal curve in PG, and uh, you take the uh, variety of tangent lines to this uh, rational normal uh, curves, it's uh, not very complicated to write it in, uh, in coordinates, um, in affine coordinates, if uh, you um, um, write uh, carefully the uh, rational normal curve, then you also have a, um, a description of the uh, tangent uh, developable surface, because you, you just have to take the derivatives and uh, add a, a new a new uh, parameter. And um, if you um, take the projectivization, um, this is a, a, a image of a map from P1 cross P1 to PG, and the core restriction over T is just a, a normalization, uh, normalization map. Okay, that's what uh, the uh, surface looks like. So uh, I also have a small animation. Uh, from this uh, representation, we notice that the uh, surface is singular along the, uh, so this is in degree uh, uh, three, so this is the uh, uh, surface that is tangent to the twisted cubic. Uh, so the, um, um, this, the uh, surface is, um, uh, singular along the uh, rational normal curve. Uh, a general hyperplane section is a canonical rational cuspidal curve of genus G with simple cusps, uh, if we take a general hyperplane section. Um, and these uh, hyperplane sections are smoothable. Um, and the uh, graded uh, Betty numbers of, uh, of uh, uh, such a hyperplane section coincides with the uh, coincide with the graded Betty numbers of the original um, tangent uh, developable surface. Uh, so, by semi-continuity of the graded Betty numbers, if we manage to prove a suitable vanishing for uh, these graded uh, Betty numbers, then we obtain also the uh, statement of uh, Vazan. And um, this is obtained uh, via the following theorem, which is an interpretation, uh, it, which is a relation between the graded Betty numbers of uh, the tangent developable surface and the dimensions of the uh, Weimann modules. So Weimann modules, once again, are Kozul um, uh, uh, modules uh, in the representation theoretic uh, setup. And now, um, from the beginning of the talk, uh, from our um, 
a vanishing result, we had, uh, we obtained the vanishing of uh, the graded pieces of these Weimann modules starting from n minus three. So in particular, if uh, G is two I plus one or two I plus two, uh, we obtained the vanishing of uh, via this um, relation, we obtained exactly the vanishing that was pre predicted by, uh, by Vaisa. And uh, uh, a few words about the, uh, the proof. So uh, just uh, the definition of uh, the uh, graded pieces of the Weinmann module. Um, so they were the homology of uh, these uh, complexes. And now if we apply Hermit reciprocity, we obtain, uh, we, we can change symmetric powers into uh, wedge powers. And this is compatible um, with the uh, um, homology. And now if we uh, take the uh, symmetric uh, algebra of, of this uh, Gth symmetric uh, um, power of, uh, of U, um, uh, you take uh, R to be the, um, uh, this uh, ring and R twiddle to be, to be this ring and omega uh, this module, uh, we have uh, an exact sequence of graded modules like that, uh, which induces an exact sequence uh, at the, the tors. And now all we have to do is to, to prove uh, the vanishing of Tor R Twiddle in the right degree uh, to have an interpretation of uh, Tor K plus one, K plus two of R Twiddle and uh, to relate it with, the, um, with this, uh, these maps. So um, somehow the, these are the, uh, the technical uh, details of uh, of, uh, of the proof. Uh, just to summarize, um, whenever you have a, a subspace in a second exterior power, you have an associated causal module. So that's, that comes for free for any, uh, for any um, situation like that. If, the, if we are lucky and the resonance is zero, uh, then we have an effective opt optimal vanishing for the graded pieces. And this uh, vanishing can be uh, potentially applied uh, to several situations like algebraic geometry or geometric group theory. I will not, I will uh, just skip the applications uh, we have in geometric uh, group theory for the moment. And some uh, concluding remarks. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the vanishing for uh, uh, causal modules is equivalent to uh, Wazan's vanishing on, on, on the syzygies of canonical curves. And uh, this holds also in a characteristic P at least G plus two over two. Eisenbahn and uh, Schreier conjecture that this should uh, happen for G minus one over two. And they have counter examples um, passing uh, this uh, lower bound. And uh, recently, Claudio Raikou and uh, Steve Sam uh, used K3 carpets. So uh, somehow those K3 carpets are uh, the generations of K3 surfaces. Uh, our uh, tangent developable surfaces are also the generations of K3 surfaces. Uh, Vazan uh, proved uh, her result using K3 surfaces. Michael Kemeny improved her proof also using K3 surfaces. So you see that some, somehow um, the whole circle of ideals turns around uh, the K3 world. And uh, these are some further um, uh, papers related to this uh, topic and um, these are my collaborators. And I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, are there any questions?
So does this apply by chance to the other M canonical embeddings or your your general uh, machinery? We, do, we, we, we don't know. So if you want to uh, relate to other embeddings, you need somehow um, um, some some relation like that. Mm -hmm. Well, probably replacing T by some something else, or you you need a relation. So this is that's somehow the only uh, situation so far where we can uh, find such a relation, because um, so CCGs are uh, usually computed uh, using Kozul cohomology, and Kozul cohomology comes from the Kozul complex, which is uh, constructed with the help of uh, exterior powers. Uh, Kozul modules are um, in the symmetric, so uh, in the symmetric uh, power world. So we need somehow a vehicle to pass from symmetric powers to wedge powers and vice versa. And here we do it by Hermit reciprocity. This is the only setup we know to how to do it. But probably it's, it's possible to do it also in other, sure, th that's a very interesting uh, question, but we don't know the answer for the moment. But, but um, did you at least like, do you know if that relation has some implication on the degree of the polarization that you must satisfy? No, 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 we don't. Okay. So beyond the canonical setup, we, we don't know anything for the moment. Okay. May I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, you said that uh, it's about, uh, maybe I should switch on my video. Uh, you said uh, that this is about uh, when uh, about K3 surfaces and degenerate yes. K3 surfaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you explain what is the reason for this? I mean, in so uh, so this uh, mm, uh, this this uh, a philosophical reason or yeah. well, I mean, it's I guess it's some technical reason. Um, so the, or philosophical the, the, would be better even. It's, it's uh, philosophical, yeah, I, I will try. I don't know if I managed to do. But um, so if you are looking for uh, general curves, um, general in the sense of Brinetter theory, uh, hyperplane sections of K3 surfaces are, are, are the best, I think. So that was, uh, for example, uh, Lars Asfeld in the 80s proved the uh, Giesecker-Petri theorem in a very short and elegant way uh, using um, these um, um, K3 sections. So somehow the reason is that the K3 sections are, um, uh, are general curves. And also uh, one advantage is that when you work in the K3 world, uh, you also have a very rich geometric context. So you have many objects that you can use. For example, you have some natural uh, bundles over the, uh, the surfaces that you can, uh, we can put at, uh, at work, like Lazarus and Mukai bundles and so on. So you, you can use the whole, uh, this whole rich geometric context to work for, for, for you. I think that's 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 the the, the the reason. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions by chance? If not, then uh, I would like to thank again the okay. very nice talk. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Stop recording. <laughs>